Hey everyone, I'm back and today we're going to be talking about Stanley Kubrick's Lolita and this movie came out in 1962 and it's one of very few Kubrick movies I haven't seen yet. The only ones I haven't seen at this point are Fear and Desire, Killer's Kiss, and The Killing. And for the longest time I've really wanted to see this movie. I finally got to see it and I really loved this movie and I'm very happy that I finally got around to seeing it. And it was very satisfying, and I love the story, the characters, just about everything in it. And I'm just going to start to kind of at the beginning without spoiling anything. And where this movie starts off is very interesting, and it gives you a complete understanding of, like, the situation and everything that you would need to know in the story, like, to get you intrigued into it. Then the movie moves along, and... It's just uh, slowly answering the questions that you're probably having and the movie goes by really fast and it doesn't waste any time and the characters are very interesting and there's really great dialogue throughout the film and there are points in this movie where it is very funny and I really thought that like in the first act especially that's where it's very light and comedic but as the movie goes along it slowly gets darker and darker and darker. And that's uh, one thing that I thought was handled incredibly well. And everything that it was doing was completely earned. And I really enjoyed the music to the film. And it complemented the scenes that it was in. And it also had an understanding of when not to use music. And that always worked out very well. And I do like the story. And uh, from my understanding, the this movie was kind of controversial at the time because it was... Uh, covering a topic that wasn't really socially acceptable like it's about uh, a guy who marries a woman and slowly starts to fall in love with his stepdaughter <laughs> and that was pretty controversial for the time and this movie was based on a book and I believe uh, the book uh, was like banned in seven countries I think it was banned in and I don't remember the exact number but anyway so this was it was a pretty controversial book when it came out and then the film adaptation happened and controversy kind of surrounded that and I know they remade it in 97 with Jeremy Irons. I've never seen that version but I'm not exactly looking forward to that version because it just doesn't look interesting. Anyways, getting a little off topic. I can see why people would have felt that way even though when you actually watch the movie it's not really encouraging the idea to do that also there's no nudity in the film like there's no sex in any scenes it's just characters talking and like having a relationship and that's pretty much the most that you get and in terms of like father-daughter relationship as the movie goes along you slowly realize that it's not just about that there's more going on in here than is presented on the actual surface of the film and also you start to realize that after a certain point what can you really explore with this concept and when you watch the movie you realize wow there was a ton to explore <laughs> with this concept and the movie just keeps going and going and there comes a point where you have no idea where it's going and you're just questioning how's this going to play out what is happening and these are all compliments to the film and there never comes a point where it becomes dull it's very well paced this movie is two and a half hours but it's never slow and the best way to describe it for me and this is going to be kind of a weird thing to say about it but this is actually what happened and when i watched this movie i was feeling a little tired because it was a little late and in any other movie I would just uh, be yawning constantly every once in a while but there was a point where I was like I'm feeling a yawn build up when I first started the movie but as it went along it kind of disappeared <laughs> because I was just so engaged and sucked into the film that I was no longer bored or tired I just I didn't want to stop and I just wanted to keep on going and there's so much to chew on it there's really interesting characters and 
the side characters, even the ones that aren't in the movie too much, they have a lot of character to them, and they all serve a purpose in the film, and the performances, I haven't even gotten to those, and Peter Sellers is in this movie, I didn't realize it was him at first, but he was hilarious in the movie, and his character is, like, he talks really fast, and <laughs> he just claims, he, oh, I'm just, a, you know, a, another normal guy, blah, 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 blah. And so he just uh, talks about nonsense, and <laughs> he's so clearly just completely out of his mind, and the movie is aware of that, and kind of pokes fun at it, and you're supposed to feel like, yeah, this guy is kind of crazy and out of his mind. <laughs> like, not in a sense where he would kill people, but it, you can just tell that you're... I don't really feel comfortable around you, to say the very least. At the very least, sorry. And one small part about this movie that I thought was kind of funny was that uh, this movie briefly uh, mentions uh, Spartacus, and I just find that funny because uh, this movie came out... Uh, Right after Spartacus, like two years earlier, we got Spartacus, and then we got Lolita, and this movie kind of mentioned the name Spartacus, and I just thought that was kind of funny, and it made me question, was that Kubrick's decision to put that in there? <laughs> I'm not sure what was going on behind the scenes, or why that was done, but it did kind of stand out, and it was kind of funny. <laughs> and in terms of issues, the only real issue I had with the movie... And it was just one shot in the movie, and this was a thing that was uh, kind of done in Casablanca. And in that movie, the one woman, I forget the character's name, but uh, the main one, uh, whenever she was on screen, it was just a shot of her, the screen was all blurry to like kind of give off this sense of like, oh, she's beautiful. And there was one shot in this movie where that happened with the character of Lolita. And also, that shot was a little blurry in, in a way that kind of felt a bit unintentional. Maybe it was just this Blu-ray that uh, screwed it up, or I don't know what happened there. <laughs> but anyways, that is like the only thing that stood out to me as a bit distracting. But the rest of the movie is excellent, and the story is just amazing, and it keeps going and going and going, and... Everything uh, that you would want uh, from a story like this, you get. And more. There's lots of surprises throughout the film. I love the presentation of everything. And the performances are amazing. And it's a really great Stanley Kubrick movie. I would highly, highly recommend that you check this movie out. And it may seem as though it could get boring at any point. But if you were to watch the movie, I doubt that... Uh, you would feel that way <laughs> that it's two and a half hours long a romance movie that's two and a half hours long that somehow manages to avoid becoming boring at any point and it's also many other things at the same time and that's what makes it engaging for me and also for the record this is not like the longest romance movie ever made i think that's like i've seen titanic and that was like over three hours long <laughs> I was never bored in Titanic, so... <laughs> Definitely check this movie out once you get the chance, and with all that being said, I'm going to give Lolita a 10 out of 10. Thank you for watching my videos as always. If you enjoyed this review, be sure to leave a like and comment down below you thought of Lolita and my social media links. They will all be in the description, so follow me there. And last but not least, subscribe to be a part of Fully Nation, and I'll see you when I get my next review up, and that is going to be for a movie that... I believe I said I'm never going to review. However, I unfortunately have to take that back because I am I decided to review this movie and also a trilogy of movies over the course of a couple of months because I, for a series, I usually do one installment per month. And the only reason I'm reviewing these movies is because I just want to finish up Every movie that I own on Blu-ray. And you've probably guessed what it is. So we're starting with part one in the series. Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace. <laughs> I know everyone's talked about it. And I'm sure everything that can be said about this movie has been said already. But I think it's about time to revisit it to, to see for myself. So look forward to that. But until I get that up, thank you for watching and have a great day.